Well, hello there and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode of the show. This is a special episode where I'm going to actually uh, talk about China. This is my China show. I know I've been talking about it for quite some time, trying to figure out what to talk about. Finally, I have some information that I've been collecting over some time, which I want to go through. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you like it and let me get right into it. Now, as I said, for today's episode, I'm going to focus on talking about a country that has been going gangbusters with EV adoption, and that is China. I don't talk about China too much, as there is so much happening there that I would have to do an entire show every week just for China to give it the proper attention it deserves. However, I thought now is a good time to provide an overview on this marketplace and how important to the EV revolution China is. Now, let me remind you all that China has the world's largest car market with around one quarter of the global vehicle sales. To recap the global plug-in market for 2020, as you know, it was a great growth year with about 30% increase in sales, reaching about 3.24 million units. And China had a big part of that overall number with about 1,272,000 1, new passenger plug-in cars being sold. That was also an increase for China, and they achieved an average plug-in market share of 6.3% compared to 5.5 in 2019. To put the Chinese plug-in market into perspective, in 2020, it represented almost 40% of the entire global marketplace. That is a huge and very important number to understand. But why is the Chinese plug-in market hot? And it continues to grow. What's driving the uptake? Let me explain some of the reasons. Now, we all know that China is a huge country population-wise, representing over 1.4 billion people. And they are also one of the largest greenhouse gas emitters on the planet. The Chinese government recognizes this, and in order to turn things around, they have jumped on the bandwagon to lower these emissions via signing the Paris Climate Agreement of 2016. Under the Paris Agreement, about 200 nations promised to set goals and cut their greenhouse gas emissions. In case you did not know, China and the United States together represent almost 40% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. Now, I am sure I will get some comments from people about the Paris Agreement and how enforcement is limited and will countries really adhere to their goals? Also, how important current economies are and the strong reliance they have on the fossil fuel industry and other areas that are not good for greenhouse gas emissions. However, I believe that China knows they can't keep the pace of industrialization they've had without devastating consequences to the climate and to the health and well-being of their people. So things have to change. Now, one main element of change that the Chinese government has embraced is the adoption of electric cars, known in China as new energy vehicles, or NEVs. Putting more NEVs on China's roads fulfills several policy objectives at once. Besides stimulating domestic consumption to support the economic recovery, the push for electrification, where one in five vehicles in circulation is now an NEV. And this also contributes to President Xi Jinping's target of making China carbon neutral by 2060. Now, to promote the switch to electrification, China's central government and local authorities are providing a slew of tax incentives to encourage car makers to assemble NEVs, cash subsidies to make NEVs affordable to consumers, and policy stimulus to accelerate technological innovation in the sector. Additionally, the Chinese government offers license plates for free, and they are guaranteed. Now, in many cities, it can take months, if not years, to get a license plate for a petrol engine vehicle through various auction systems. So because of these incentives, the total number of NEVs, inclusive of all electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, and fuel cell vehicles, may balloon to 5.42 billion units by 2025, according to research by the global market research firm International Data Corporation. Now, to help with this growth, let me focus on a few brands that are leading the charge. And for the first, let me start with Tesla. 
Now, as most know, they built an assembly plant in Shanghai known as Gigafactory 3. It opened in 2018 and produces the Model 3 and the Model Y. Tesla has been very successful with this approach and in 2020 sold almost 140,000 Model 3s, which helped to make the Model 3 the number one EV globally last year. Model Y production started with deliveries occurring this past January. Tesla expects the Model Y to outsell the Model 3 in China, and this could help Tesla achieve 400,000 sales in 2022. Tesla reduced the pricing on the Model Y recently by one-third to help motivate sales, so you can bet that they will remain focused on this marketplace for the long term. The second leading plug-in sales brand in China last year was Wuling, which I will skip over for now and talk about a bit later in the show. Continuing down the list, in my opinion, one of the most important brands in China is, and will continue to be, is BYD. It was the third best-selling brand for plug-ins in China last year. After Tesla, the company that sells the most EVs per hour is BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams. According to the McKinsey Electric Vehicle Index, Tesla sells 42 EVs per hour and BYD sells 26. So BYD also has a joint venture with Daimler to produce a brand called Denza. And its electric buses are in use around the world, even with electric garbage trucks on the streets in California. They've become one of the leaders in electric urban transportation, with many bus fleets using BYD buses to convert to all-electric operations. Now, by the way, China has been a huge adopter of all-electric buses, deploying over 450,000 in the last seven years. That equates to over 278,000 barrels of oil per day of consumption savings. And from an emissions standpoint, these buses represent the equivalent of taking over 54 million, yes, you heard me correctly, over 54 million internal combustion vehicles off the road. The BYD portfolio is huge. However, for sales in China, four of their models make up the top 20 sales of last year. These models are the Keen Pro EV, the Han EV, the Tang Plug-in Hybrid EV, and the Wan S2 EV. Sales for these models added up to almost 108,000 last year. The Quinn Pro is a small sedan. The Han is a full-size sedan. The Tang is a full-size SUV. And the Wan S2 is a small microcar. So you can see the variety of the EV appetite from the Chinese consumers. It spans all classes. However, one area I do see a huge uptake in is the microcar segment, which I will talk about more in a bit. Just keep in mind that BYD has a very competitive offering here. The Beiyu Jun brand is from the General Motors Chinese joint venture known as SAIC GM Wuling. Production commenced in September of 2018, and from February 2018, the E200 was available to order at market launch throughout China. It is the second Beijing electric car following the E100. Now, these E-series vehicles achieved sales of about 48,000 last year. To say there is a market for these small microcars is an understatement. I'm going to explain this more in a minute, but I wanted you to be aware of a trend emerging in China. Great Wall Motors is another Chinese marquee brand building electric passenger cars and crossovers. They've been operating since 2018, and their model, the Aura Black Cat R1, took fourth place in overall plug-in sales last year with almost 47,000 units sold in China. Gaining popularity along with others in this microcar segment, the R1 is a humble electric commuter with a great warranty, good range, and most importantly, a fantastic government subsidized price. Now, there are a slew of other manufacturers and models comprising this huge Chinese market, notably GAC with their um, Aion S midsize sedan, the NIO with the ES6 midsize SUV, and even a sports coupe from Xpeng with their P7, which saw sales surge in December of last year. However, I think you may be starting to see a pattern emerging with regards to what will be hot for 2021. 
And that brings me to the EV manufacturer that came in second last year in China, achieving sales of over 119,000 units. Wuling Hongquan Mini EV. That was just being on the market for half the year as it was released in July of 2020. And last month, sales of this budget electric car were around double those of Tesla. Again, manufactured by the SAC GM GM Wuling Joint Venture, the Wuling Hongquan Mini EV is an all-electric city car focused on moving people within larger urban areas. Its specs are not earth-shattering. It comes with either a 9.2 kWh battery rated for 75 miles, 120 kilometers NEDC, or 13.8 kWh battery providing up to 110 miles, 170 kilometers of range. It can seat four people and is powered by a single 13 kilowatt motor producing 17.4 horsepower and 62.7 pound-feet of torque. Top speed is 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, and no one really cares about 0 to 60 numbers on this vehicle. However, what Chinese consumers do care about is price. And the Hong Kwan Mini EV has a starting price of $4,100 US and is fully optioned out at $5,600 US, making it China's cheapest EV in pricing. Looking at this and other microcars, one will see that cheap is not necessarily transferred to quality or features. This EV offers many standard features, including AC, power windows, stereo system, and 741 liters or 26 cubic feet cubic feet of trunk space with the rear seats folded down. However, we must remember that this vehicle and others like it are designed to meet basic transportation needs at a low price. The success of Wuling here is interesting as it shows evidence that there is also a competitive cost value for extreme small, and not only for luxury SUV and sedans, electric cars. In my view, this is the true revolution. I believe the Wuling Mini EV sends these messages. That a four-seater or two plus two can sell. That three doors can sell. And 110 kilometers of range can sell as well. It's okay to have a car with minimal features. As long as it has an affordable price, it can sell. Now remember folks, in other places like in Japan, where 35% of vehicles sold are mini cars, and ultra-small vehicles are common in many parts of the world. Why, even in Europe, with the likes of the Citroën Ami, ultra-small vehicles are being built and sold. I know here in North America, we generally, generally like more roomy vehicles, and of course, SUVs and pickup trucks are all the rage in popularity. However, we cannot forget that for many other parts of the world that make up a very large segment of the automobile consumers, smaller vehicles are better. Of course, it is cooler to make luxury cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. But remember, cars are a consumer product, and price points are important. As American innovators like Tesla push forward at the premium end of the EV market, China is going for volume at the low end, with subsidies incentivizing zero-emission motoring. And believe me, Tesla is fully aware of this. And that is why they are pushing development for their next car, currently believed to be called the Tesla 2, or Model 2, as a subcompact designed and built in China vehicle. On the one hand, it's out of necessity. With China's gigantic urban populations suffering from shocking air pollution that kills hundreds of thousands a year, that drives the NEV market. So not only do these moves do plenty to help China fight pollution, and climate change. They also position China well as the EV wave begins to break globally. And the benefits to the Chinese consumer are clear in vehicles like the Mini EV, which is being marketed as the people's commuting tool. With the Hongguan Mini, this is the first time a major company has stepped up with a simple EV that targets buyers looking for a real car experience not low-quality, low-speed products. So in my opinion, folks, this is what the marketplace was missing in the 2020s. Amazing run-up. Remember that in the grand scheme of things, China is a poor country. According to the IMF, China's 2020 GDP per capita 
is just under $11,000 US, and it ranks 59th in the world between Costa Rica and Malaysia. So yes, price does matter. And to finish up this episode, I want to announce that my pick for EV of the year goes to, yep, you guessed it, the Wuling Hongquan Mini EV. I think it is one of the catalysts for the next EV adoption wave, and it will do very well in 2021. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show, my special China Show edition. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching on YouTube. I really appreciate it. You, uh, subscribe as well. If you haven't, please do. If you want to send comments and like and all that stuff, please do. I always enjoy reading comments. I put a lot of effort into this show, folks, so I really hope that you enjoyed it. Of course, to my Patreon supporters, I'm always humbled uh, by you all every single month, and I do get emails and communications. Please keep them coming. Thank you very much. If you want to learn how to support me by Patreon, check out the link below. Of course, continue to please follow public health guidelines to stay safe as the vaccines are rolling out, more options are becoming available. The next few months will be critical. We will get there. Keep the faith, folks. It is happening. And continue to watch, as I've been saying, this exciting electric vehicle marketplace. All kinds of things are happening around the world. It's so much that I just can't cover it on my own. So I do hope you enjoy uh, my show and the stories that I do cover from time to time. And please continue to watch. And until the next show, please, everybody stay safe. And I will see you when I see you. Take care.